This week we'll practice with the computation of real integrals. This is one of the most beautiful applications of complex analysis. You'll notice that the integrals which seem to be rather non-trivial from the real analysis point of view are easily computable once you promote the integrand into a complex plane. And as usual, let's start our consideration with some simple example. And here is our first integral. From minus infinity to infinity, dx over 1 plus x squared. Well, this is an elementary integral. Some of you may probably even remember the antiderivative, which is arctangent. Or the others may take this integral using the trigonometric change x equal to tangent of t. Anyway, the integral is equal to the difference of its antiderivative, arctangent, of x at plus infinity and minus infinity, which is pi by 2 minus negative pi by 2, which gives us pi. Now let's try this integral from the complex analysis point of view. Well, as usual with powerful methods, when applied to simple situations like this, they may seem to be even more involved. But the advantage here is that powerful methods allow to treat cases which seem to be previously untractable. So let's see how this can be applied here. Well, complex analysis likes closed contours. As you remember, our all Cauchy theorems or Cauchy integral formulas dealt with closed contours. So our first step here, and actually in all the future problems, is to close the contour. And the idea here is that when we close the contour, the integral along these additional elements are easily computed or even vanish. Like for example here. We deal here with an open contour with endpoints at plus and minus infinity, and we need to close it somehow. One of the most obvious choices would be infinite semicircles positioned either in the upper or lower semi-planes. So let's opt for an upper semicircle. And now we may apply Cauchy integrals formula for this closed contour integral. And as you remember, the most prominent consequence of Cauchy integral theorem is that the integral retains its value for any deformation of the contour as long as this deformation doesn't touch singularities. Here our integrand, our function f of z promoted into a complex plane, 1 over 1 plus z squared, has only two singularities at point z equals plus minus i, which are simple poles, and we may shrink our contour in such a way that it becomes an infinitesimal circle around point z equals i, like this. And the point here, as we saw many times earlier, the integrals along the infinitesimal circles are quite easily computed. But of course we should keep in mind that we changed our integral. We added this infinite arc. So what we are talking here about is not our original integral. So we need to find the relation between this closed contour integral and our original integral. And one particular good thing about this infinite arc is that our argument z, our complex number, always stays large as we move along this arc. And that means that instead of our original integrand, we may use its asymptotics for large values of z. And the asymptotics is always simpler than the original function. For example, here we have 1 over 1 plus z squared. At large z, it is turned into 1 over z squared. So basically, we compute the integral dz over z squared as we move along this arc from plus infinity to minus infinity. And it has a very simple antiderivative, minus 1 over z. And this integral will be given by the difference of these antiderivatives at point plus infinity and minus infinity. But 1 over z vanishes at plus infinity and minus infinity, and that means that this arc integral is actually equal to zero. So despite the fact that we changed our original integral, our closed contour integral is equal to the initial integral. And eventually it's reduced to this infinitesimal circular integral round point z equals i. That is the amazing consequence of application of Cauchy integral theorem. And now let's compute this circular integral. As usual, we introduce the parameterization z equals i plus epsilon times e to i phi, where dz is equal to epsilon e to i phi i d phi, and decompose our integrand as dz over z plus i times z minus i. Well, dz over z minus i is simply reduced to i d phi. So in the end, we are left with the integral from 0 to 2 pi i d phi, over 2i plus epsilon times e to i phi. But epsilon is tending to zero. So we discard this epsilon term in the denominator and obtain one half of the integral of d phi, which is again equal to pi. Well, despite that complex analysis treatment seem to be more involved here, still you can't deny its geometrical beauty. 
So in our next video, I will give you powerful theorems, which will provide you with formidable tools of computing that kind of integrals. And it will eventually automate your procedure of tackling these integrals.